And now to Syria. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis says that President Bashar al-Assad and his regime does have more chemical weapons. Russia claims to have supervised the removal of all those chemical weapons back in 2014. This after Assad's apparent gas attack on his own people earlier this month. Well, Assad and Moscow have blamed rebels for that attack. Well, Secretary Mattis says the issue should be handled diplomatically, he says. But he also warned the Assad regime not to push the U.S. There can be no doubt in the international community's mind uh, that Syria has retained chemical weapons. It's a violation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions, and it's going to have to be taken up diplomatically, and they'd be ill-advised to, to try to use any again. We made that very clear with our strike. So what if his government allegedly uses chemical weapons again? And can Syria ever find peace? Well, joining us now is Ms. Sam Rafai, who's a policy advisor of the Syrian American Council, who has done a lot of humanitarian work on behalf of his people. Bashan, thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Eric. They're not supposed to have chemical weapons. It no. was a done deal that, was, that everyone proclaimed and, and praised. Uh, what happened? So you're absolutely correct. They weren't supposed to have chemical weapons. Uh, but we've seen this time and time again where uh, Bashar al-Assad has lied about having chemical weapons. In 2013, he said that he didn't have chemical weapons. He said that he wasn't the one who carried out the attack. And we know that to be false. Russia brokered a deal that, uh, you know, they, they outright uh, uh, proved that, that Assad did have chemical weapons. And then we're seeing it again now that he's lying, that he didn't carry out the, the chemical weapons attack, and he's saying that he doesn't have them now, he didn't use them before. And uh, uh, General Mattis has, has confirmed you know, that for us. You know, we met over at the UN the other week, and what's so uh, uh, tragic about this is that we have these international agreements that officials say are, are binding, and they apparently turn out not to be true. Let me play you a few sound bites of some of our U.S. officials, including former President Obama, saying that everything was fine when it comes to chemical weapons. We were able to find a solution that actually removed the chemical weapons that were known from Syria in a way that the use of force would never have accomplished. Russia has been constructive in helping to remove 100 percent of the declared chemical weapons from Syria. Uh, in fact, uh, that was an agreement we made months ago, and it never faltered even during these moments of conflict. People may criticize us for not having uh, uh, launched missiles against uh, Assad after chemical weapons uh, had been used, but keep in mind why we didn't. We didn't because you they got rid of the chemical weapons. And that, in fact, was very important. But, Sam, that must make your heart sick. It really does. Uh, it hurts to actually see uh, the Obama administration continue to uh, push this, uh, this agenda that, that Assad didn't, uh, that all the chemical weapons were taken out of Syria. Uh, obviously, we know that now to be false. Uh, and we know that, that Assad is not playing by international rules. He doesn't care about, uh, about civilians. He doesn't care about humanity. Uh, and he will continue to use chemical weapons. Yeah, Israel has a report out. They think that they still have five tons of chemical weapons. So what does the world do if there's another chemical attack? You know, Assad and the Russians will say it's the rebels. Uh, the rest of the world will say, well, it's sarin gas that's being used. Should we launch more cruise missiles? And what about the fact that the Trump administration did launch those missiles? What was that message to you, and what did it mean to you and to the Syrian people that you represent who are fighting for freedom and, and trying to have a new Syria? Absolutely. So it was, it was uh, very uh, hopeful to see President Trump actually carry out that strike. It was the first time we had seen something like that in the last seven years, uh, trying to, to see some action out of President Obama and just not seeing it time and time again, being disappointed. So uh, we were very hopeful to see that. We're also very hopeful to see uh, President Trump carry out uh, future attacks on Assad regime uh, uh, warplanes and, and to ground his air force. That's what's, that's what's important. You think there should be potentially more attacks on the air? Uh, some of the warplanes apparently have flown to Russian air bases. So we may not attack right. those because they're at the Russian air bases. But you think you would not hesitate to launch other attacks if need be? I mean, that, that's, that's what uh, is killing civilians on the ground. That's also what is fueling ISIS. Uh, you know, talking about ISIS is not exclusive from talking about Assad. Uh, they go hand in hand. And do you think, I mean, look, if the, the U.S. and a coalition had done this years ago, if they had bombed the airfields, prevented the helicopters from barrel bombing their own people, if they took off some of those warplanes before the Russians got in, if the Obama administration had done that, as Hillary Clinton, uh, we had been told, urged the pr former president to do, and they did not, do you think 
your country would be where we are today had the West taken some stronger action back then. That is an absolutely good point to, to hit. I don't believe we would be in the position we're in today. Uh, in fact, uh, every week that goes by, we are putting ourselves into a weaker position. If we had uh, taken stronger action during the Obama administration, we would be seeing a very different story today. And now finally, what, what do we do? Do you think there will be peace eventually? There's the Geneva Peace Conference. It looks like Assad's going to stay. What is your prediction for your nation? Well, it, um, it is necessary for Assad to go. There's no, there's no situation where I can see people living under the Assad regime. He's proved in the past to be a very brutal dictator, to uh, be very vengeful. Um, and it's, uh, it's, going, it's going to happen, but it's, uh, a diplomatic solution will happen with a military backing and with a uh, serious push from the United States. So you say from this, for the threat of force potentially uh, and for action eventually that, that could come? Absolutely. Well, it's been a, a humanitarian catastrophe that has claimed half a million lives, what, 14 million refugees and displaced people uh, or so that is just astounding. Uh, and we thank you for coming in and for your humanitarian work. Thank you for having me on the Syrians. Bashar Rafai of the Syrian American Council. Thank you.